are back again with a final uh, video for VCHP. This is going to show the label file editor. I've chosen to do voice on this one since it can be a little bit complicated and hard to follow. Um, I'm going to start off by just showing you basically what a label file is. If we go into uh, VCDS, uh, I currently only have one module hooked up on my test bench. Um, we go into, say, coding here, long coding, and we'll see here that there actually is not um, a label file available for this particular module. So basically everything is blank, but it does give us all the check boxes, which is sometimes preferable um, if you know what you're doing with those check boxes. Uh, other times a label file may exist, but check boxes may not be available. The label file is also responsible for things such as adaptation. As you can see, there's no drop down list here because there's no label file. Um, measuring blocks are also available. What the label file does is it gives a description for these. If there is no label file, VCDS will make a best guess. If it sees something to do with distance, it just says distance. If it sees something to do with speed, it just says speed and voltage and so forth. Um, I mean, generally, that's probably going to be correct, but it doesn't tell you necessarily for, say, temperature, what the temperature is. So having a, a label file is a little bit more descriptive and can allow little balloons to, to give you the ranges and so forth. Right now, output tests are, are something as well as basic settings uh, that can be controlled with a label file. However, most modules now do contain all the output test information themselves. So as you can see here, there is no label file, yet it's giving me all the proper information in regards to what the testing is. So if we go back to um, CHP here, we now have a label file editor. Now you can actually open an existing label file and do editing and so forth within it. Now this will only work with unencrypted label files. VCDS has chosen to start encrypting their files to protect the information. Uh, I do know a lot of the information is provided to them by customers and people and so forth, but they're uh, encrypting them now so that you don't have direct access to actually making them. They do, however, still support the original non-encrypted format in a folder uh, that VCDS has. So you take your own file, you drop it into that folder, and it will look there first for your file before it uses its. So you can open a, a non-encrypted file to do work with. Now, there are a number of different ways to actually create these files. Uh, using Notepad is one of them, but it can be a little bit tedious and long. What this little editor here does is it allows you to do things like insert a main header automatically with pre-saved settings. Um, if you're going to do a security code for the module, you can go insert security. Right Now the module will actually have a security code pop up when you click on security code. You can uh, obviously install, like here's the header for long coding, but if I wanted to insert the coding line, I can just hit long coding here. Um, I'm going to start off with zero. If I wanted to add more, I just go one, two, and so forth. And the same with measuring blocks. I can add a measuring block line. If I want to add another one, I can just do that. Now, of course, if you require more, depending on your situation, you can just simply type them in. The nice thing is, is that everything is more or less color-coded. So once you get used to using this program, you can tell fairly quickly what it is that you're working with by the syntax. Now, you notice with the adaptation, there's a bunch here that are blocked out. Um, that is because you very rarely use one through four. Those are for descriptions of the boxes within uh, the adaptation, which most of the time are never used. Right? Uh, the very first line is what gives you your drop down, and the rest here are what gives you your balloon. So I'm not going to get into the, the fine details of the label file, but more or less show you how you can create them. So if we just go back to starting a new one. Uh, I have created a wizard to try and make things a little bit easier uh, in creating label files with exactly what you need. 
So if we click on the label file, what is, where is it here at the top, right? Just a brief welcome. Now you can enter in your copyright name, your first name, last name, your email if you want the email address in your label file. Now this information only shows when looking at it in an editor, so if you distribute your file and someone goes in to make a change, they can see who the original creator of the file was. Right. If we move along, right, we can select the vehicles that we want. So if we wanted to make a label file for the module that I currently have hooked up, right, um, that's actually a parking module for the uh, B8 model vehicles. Right, so since it would support more than one vehicle, I can select multiple vehicles um, from the list, such as the A5, the A4. If I wanted to also add the um, Q5, which is 8R. Right, and there's my vehicle list. Right, I can choose which module it is here, and you'll see how this all makes sense in a moment. Right, so that's a parking assistant module. If you know the part number, I'm not sure exactly what it is without poking my head around the computer, but it's this particular one was AK, sorry, 8KD, uh, something, 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 something. Right, now if there's more than one part number that this uh, file can apply to, you can insert another one here. Right now, here's where we get to choose what it is exactly that we want to display. Um, I'm going to end up adding measuring blocks, adaptation. Although there is no security code, uh, we'll do that in a second. Uh, and long coding. So I click next. Right, I can enable the security code, and let's say we put a security code of one, two, three, four, five for the sake of having one in there, since there actually is no security code needed for this module. So once I click finish, uh, it's now going to ask me for the line numbers of the long coding and then the adaptation and then the measuring blocks. The reason this isn't kind of built in as a start and end number in the wizard is because when you get into larger files, you may not want all of the long coding lines or all of the adaptation lines, especially since there's 255 adaptation uh, possibilities. So this way you can tailor and add what you want. Now all the right buttons are highlighted so that you can do this fairly quickly. We can start off with zero, just hit enter again. Um, you can hit one, it'll automatically append the zeros for you, two, three, I'm just hitting the enter key. So you can see how quickly you can add those in there. Now once I'm done, I just hit cancel. Now it's gonna ask me for the adaptation blocks. Right, so start off with zero. It's good if you wanna do resets. Right, one, two, three, four, and here's where it gets odd. I want 23. Right, so now I'm done with that. Now I wanted measuring blocks for this example. I'm just going to do three. So I'm going to do group one, two, and three. So there we go. Now we have our basic template. Very basic as there's not too much information in here. Now if we go up the top here, we can see that Audi Enthusiast that's added in for the copyright. We have the three vehicles we chose. We have the parking assistant to listed. This is where a J number would go in, if you know the J number of the module. Uh, I think it's J446. Uh, once again, part number, you can do editing here. Now this file includes adaptations, long coding security codes, and measuring blocks. Uh, it's created on this date by myself. and of course fake email uh, not that I'm trying to hide from anyone uh, last modification date and what version of ECDS it requires I'm really not sure what version it requires but 910 is a pretty good place to start since that has the latest long coder and some of the newer protocols now once you've come to here adding a description to a, uh, a checkbox is as easy as doing something like this Okay, so now we want to save this. Let's file, save, or come up there. Now you can see it's automatically gone and put 10 in as 
um, the file name. So it's test-10 and it's being saved in our label user file. Right, so I'm just going to save that. So let me just uh, come back here. We'll go to our applications again. Launch VCDS. We're going to select module 10. Coding, long code helper, and look at that. My first file, optical enabled. I'm not sure if that's the proper line, but see now you can see that we can simply add things. What we can do is we can do live updates to the file. So if you're experimenting, trying to find things, updating your file, you can actually just make a change like that, save it. All right, let's just cancel that. We'll close the controller. We'll go back into the controller. And there we go, now we've got an updated line. So you can keep this open while you're actually working. If you're experimenting, exploring a module, you can do updates to the file. If you end up finding something that can't be coded, you could just simply say, can't code. And if you wanted to, just so you don't have to uh, see it, once you've actually finished your file, simply putting a semicolon in front of it will make the line disappear. So if we want to just take a look at that, disappeared. So to give you an idea of what a finished file is, I'm just going to pause for one second and I actually worked on a, a file last night for about an hour or two and created a file for this module since there isn't one and I will actually swap them over and show you what a completed file can look like. <coughs> so here we are, we're going to go back and just back out of this. Now if we close the controller down and go back in we should see the file that I created uh, previous to the tutorial. So here we see I've actually got a drop down to choose whether or not trailer hits installed, graphics, rear camera, anything that's actually known. This is what a finished file can look like. Now I know it looks an awful lot like the original VCDS one, but it's not. Right, so here is, is one of the differences between, say, the VCDS file of my own um, and the frequency. I've actually got all the hertz listed for the different values as opposed to just saying choose a value between 1 and 9. So that's the nice thing about a label, uh, making your own label files as well, is that you can put your own notes, add information, and so forth. As opposed to the VCDS one, which just has what the default is, I've actually got in what the maximum value is as well, so you're not driving yourself crazy. And once again, the measuring blocks. You can see the difference here. I've been able to add all my own notes and so forth. Little balloons. And if you wanted to, uh, although you can't do it with the encrypted files, you can open up a file that you're currently using and take a quick look. So this is actually the label file that we're currently using. So there you go. That is kind of the basics on uh, creating a label file using uh, VCHP and some of the additional features. Uh, there are some other items that could be added and I will probably take a look at that down the road such as the test feature which starts with a T there's R and RD for resetting and so forth uh, if you're that advanced into VCDS though chances are you already know those uh, those shortcuts and you can just type them in manually so there you go another uh, addition to the VCHP program hopefully one that will help uh, not only people who just want to add a checkbox to a program because they don't feel comfortable changing the bytes uh, manually, but also for the more advanced users and for people with new vehicles that want to go and do a little bit of exploring. So for now, uh, David from AudioEnthusiast.com and VCHP.